I think no matter how Allen plays, you take the playoffs over his production, period. Oh, my God. I, I agree with you, sir. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Please shove the rest of that plain bagel. Blah. This is a five iron off the tee. You can't, you can't deny that. I hit my five iron 280, you know that, right? Oh, my God. Stop it. Is that cr- I'm not joking. Okay, what hurricane was it that you were playing? <laughs> it's called, I got a 12-foot arc. Yeah, you do. I, th- I found that out when I was benching yesterday. I was sitting there, I'm like, man, this sucks. 37 and a half inch arm suck. There's 37 and a half inch? Jesus. You should enter those Russian slapping contests that they have. <laughs> That's Russian slap boxing. <laughs> I mean, your beard grows every... Four seconds, it gets longer. So just go ahead and build, build, build up a little cushion there, and go into those Russian slap boxing competitions and see what happens. I would. I, I don't. I don't. Eh. The amount of times I've been punched in the face, I don't like it. <laughs> I've discovered this is not the prefer, preferred method of communication. <laughs> <laughs> I put that in your resume, So It says you were you were second place finisher in the national. 2019 International Slap Boxing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got something to say about it? <laughs> <laughs> you want to shout at the title? <laughs>
uh, and get it over with. So that way, when you get to that playoff game where you could be playing them, you have the opportunity to go and do things that you haven't done to other teams. Because Patriots play a very different style of offense uh, than everybody else in the league, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, uh, having a short turnaround time, if it's going to happen, that's fine. I'll play them week 16. I'd rather play them week 16 and then again in the first round of the playoffs or even the second round of the playoffs. I'd rather that happen with a short turnaround time than play them week four, week 10, and then go and see them in the playoffs. I'd rather have that short TAT on. Uh, would you rather go to the Super Bowl with Matt Barkley or miss the playoffs with Josh Allen? I'll go to the Super Bowl. End of conversation. You always go to the Super Bowl. Well, that's a quick Always. One. I was trying. I'm, I'm trying to take these off the top of my head. I'm not. None of these were planned. No, I think that's fair because somebody brought that up in the comments section. They did. Somebody did. Somebody brought that up in the... I don't remember who it well, was. Well, they like Barkley. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of Barkley. It's, you know, Barkley, I don't think it's the accolades that he should. Had he come out his junior year, would have been a top five pick. Went back to USC. Everything was a disaster. And then they realized, oh, you're slow as hell. You can't run. Oh, you have knee injuries. Oh, okay. Oh, you've got... This little problem. You got this little problem. Went to the Eagles. Went to the Bears. Like, kicked around the a Jets. bit. Went to the Jets. Oh, the Eagles or the Jets? No, he went to the Eagles. He was the drafted Eagles. by the Eagles. All right, because I know him and him and uh, fellow USC Mark Sanchez were together for They sure year. were. They sure were. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think I speak to any Bills fan. You always go to the Super Bowl. It's so weird, though, because you, I wonder how the Eagles fans felt. They probably were happy because they won the Super Bowl. But, sure. hey, our franchise quarterback went down. He was having an MVP year. He got hurt. This guy, Nick Foles comes in and wins it. Yep. Like, okay. Would you rather trade LaShawn McCoy now, or would you rather trade him at week eight? You have to pick one of them. I'm not allowing you to say keep LaShawn McCoy. Do you trade? Would you rather trade him now, or would you rather trade him at week eight? Because this is a paradigm shift. Trading a guy inside the locker room that's a staple of the organization. This is a big this is a big deal. This is a heavy question. So what would you rather do? What's contingent on week eight? Obviously from trade trading deadline. in week eight. Trade trade deadline. Oh no, it's, I know it's a trade deadline, but are there any parameters going on here in which I trade him because is he having a great year? Did a team lose a running back that's at the playoff contention? You, are the Bill what's the Bill's record? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Bills have a losing record at week eight, I trade him. Okay. I trade All him right. at week eight. If, 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 the only reason I would trade him before the season is if an, a situation happened with him or you're trying to get your team in there as fast as possible and some team gives you an offer that you can't turn down. Okay. Like, I know we say it's insane, but if they if someone offers a third rounder for you, yeah, not knowing what the third rounder is going to be right now because there's no no one has a record. Uh -huh. Um Third round picks are still value. Third round picks have can still carry way more value than fourth round picks because third round picks is when all those compensatory picks start exactly. coming in, and your fourth round pick becomes less and less valuable the more compensatory picks get added. If you trade, at least in my opinion, if you trade for a third round pick and you have two of those, you automatically have a second rounder. Yep. Yeah. Teams. Teams. A hundred percent. You want to get back in. Two, two threes thirds for a you're second. You're back in. Is immediately. So if you get, if you are able to obtain your third round pick, you can even just say I have another second round. Right. Essentially. Right. Okay. So if you need to get up and get a player, that's the way that goes. So I would say, I'm so torn with it. I would say, I, I guess I would say week eight because okay. then Singletary will be fresher for, I, for the run. I completely have the opposite opinion of you. And okay. here's why. All right. I, if I'm GM, I can't afford Shady to put another eight weeks of film like the first eight weeks last season because now he's, he's, has carries minimal to no value. But to your point, he's you're trading him. He is getting traded. Right, yeah. But what I'm saying is I would trade him before the season in fear that he puts film on like the first eight weeks of this last season. Because if, he if he's doing well... If he's doing well, his trade value increases, right? But why would but, you trade him? That's the point. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. But that's my point is you're going to keep him or you're not, right? Yeah, you're yeah, going to trade yeah. him before the season or you're not. You're going to cut him before the season, or you're not. If you start the season with Shady, you have to ride with him. Um, if you trade him at week eight, 
if he's having an outstanding year, again, the only way you're moving him is if the team's losing and you're looking at it like, okay, we, we don't have a shot here, right? We're mm-hmm. we're five, we're one in five. It's time, you yeah, know, it's yeah. it's time to just cut bait. Wow, that's um, crazy. But that's, why would you? I mean, <laughs> but exactly, right? You're so, one in five. You lose Shady and Dable. Yeah, but ex- <laughs> exactly. I love just peppering you. With I that. know, but it's true though. There's a lot of variables that come in. Uh, to me, if I'm if if the thought of trading Shady is in my mind as a GM, I'm trying to make a move before or as close to the season starts as possible, because I I don't want I don't want what I saw last year at the beginning of last year. You know, it's, I don't want that. What that lawnmower? Did you look at the lawnmower? Yeah, I know. They still have electric ones. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. I guess if my lawn was the size of a pack of gum, I'd have a <laughs> I think a third for Shady is really high. Though. Oh, no, I, I'm not yeah. saying you'd get one. I'm okay. saying if okay. a team... That's what that's a situation where you can't turn it down. Right. You because you're building... If you think you're building for the future, you got Allen, you want to... Maybe there's a couple guys you're going to be losing over the next couple of years. Maybe there's a couple guys you, your fear that you won't re-sign. Okay, we need that those assets for to build right. for the future to have sustainability. Yeah. If... I mean... Your point, if he if if you are trading him, if that's the if that's the thing that's happening either before the season or week eight, week eight you're trading him because a your record's horrible, uh-huh. and b or he's doing well and your record's horrible, uh-huh. or he's doing poorly, and you're not going to get much value for him anyway. So right. you do it before any kind of tape gets. There. Everyone knows about Shady. Yeah. If if a guy goes down in camp, then it becomes a real possibility. Sure. Um, sure it does. It just it's just an option. I'm not saying we're we're saying that it's gonna happen. It's just a would you rather. Would you rather I think I know the answer to this one though. But I'm I'm more curious about the comments. Sure. Would you rather sit at a Bills game that was negative thirty or a hundred? Because we have both of them in the in the we same sure season do. a lot. We sure do. <laughs> um, well first off, you could sit in a game that's a hundred just as long as you're on the right side of the stadium. Because <laughs> there's one side of the stadium <laughs> at 1 o'clock that's all shade. <laughs> you just go ahead and you get seats. If you ever look at, if you ever go online and look at t- tickets that are available on days where it's going to be like 85, 90, the, the one side of the stadium, all available. The other side, you can't get tickets over there. Well, the, the, it's, don't, don't all stadiums have to be built north-south? No. You don't know this? No. You don't know this caveat? No. Stadiums have to be built north south so there's not light in in the team's face, like the sun in the team's face for a hole. Did you know that? No. I've read that. I've read that somewhere. That's where stadiums stadiums have to be built no, uh, east west. No wait, north south. So teams don't have the sun in their face. Okay, we we that. I'm serious. I, I'm not making it up. Most football fields have end zones in the north and south portion of the stadium. But that's... Oh, here we go. Uh, the U.S. face north-south. The NFL has no rules or guidelines regarding stadium orientation. Oh, okay. Uh, but you got a good point. But 70% of stadiums are built facing north-south. So a vast majority of stadiums are, but it's not a requirement by the NFL. Oh, well, okay. That's all actually right. a fair thought... point. You would think the NFL, with all their regulations, would have some sort of stadium orientation rule. Well, I think... The, the, the minute I told that to you, and I knew I, I might have read that somewhere... The Broncos, you ever see highlights of them sometimes? Yeah. They're, the light's right in their face. Right. Well, they're uh, closer to the sun than everybody else. <laughs> Would you rather all Bills receivers, their top four Bills receivers, would you rather all four of your Bills receivers get 40 to 50 receptions, four to five touchdowns each, or would you rather there be one clear-cut number one guy that just emerges? Option A. You'd rather have yes. everybody even. Yes. And we, this is a spinoff of what we've talked about with our different offenses. And yeah. We're going to be in disagreement here because... We are going to be in disagreement. That's how you are. And yeah. I understand that. Your your philosophy, I'll let you tell them your philosophy. My philosophy is that if you, if I have four or five guys that have 40 to 50 catches and you think I, you could shut them down, uh, you don't know where I'm going with the ball. Mm-hmm. You, don't, you can't shift coverages everywhere, which means you play a balanced attack, which means you may even have to play man on certain situations, which is very dangerous against Josh Allen. Sure. And the, and the blocking scheme that they're going to have, you can't really play man. Yeah, the, but the, I, other, the other caveat is, of the, is this. If you don't know where I'm going with the ball, you can't shut one guy down, mm-hmm. and then I have to adjust my whole game plan. Mm-hmm. 
uh, here's here's my counter to that is that there's a lot of teams that have tried that in recent years. It's San Francisco last year, the year before that, um, Seattle the last two years because Baldwin hasn't been healthy. They haven't had a choice. They've had to go with a bunch of guys across the board. Uh, the Jets, uh, these are not teams that are successful at throwing the football. So I disagree because I'll okay. take right. I will take a number a clear number one okay. with, with a pack of uh, with a pack of idiots versus a pack of maybe not idiots. <laughs> okay, with the exception of Russell Wilson. None of those guys had quarterbacks. We won six games with ours last year. I didn't say we had I a quarterback just, either. I'm, oh, boy, that's an intro. That's a that's a dark hole. I don't want to go down. I don't want to go down that hole. Do you? No. no. I don't. Would you care to travel? No. I don't want to go Come down with the, me. No. Come to you, the dark side. You can't. No. You can't. Honestly, sit there and say that he by the end of the year he was polished. No, of course not. Okay. You can't say Josh Allen was polished. By the, the first end. six versus the second six, it's a different quarterback. Very much agree. Okay, very much. He agree. was a wide-eyed, trying to get everything. He was lost at times. Yeah, and we know that, and we're accepting of that because of how much he improved throughout the year. Right. That's why I made the comment. It wasn't yeah. that we don't have a quarterback. God, you tried to get me in trouble. That's my quarterback. That's, <laughs> That's my, my quarterback. T.O. was crying when Donovan McNabb made the I should be in the Hall of Fame comment, but it was for a different reason. <laughs> T.O. probably looked like LeBron at, at J.R. Smith. <laughs> you remember, uh, you see what, hear what T.O. said? No, I don't know exactly what he said. Hey, Cole, what do you think about, Don- what do you think about Donovan saying he should be in the Hall of Fame? T.O. goes, who? <laughs> Would you rather Josh Allen throw for 45 touchdowns this year and the Bills miss the playoffs, or he throws for 20 and they make the playoffs? Okay. It's that's interesting. A, that's, a tough, that's a tough one. Because right? it's very – it's that's almost like one. the discussion. Like, would you rather – who's the worst team in the NBA this year? Basketball? That sport's still around? Um <laughs> It's sort of like asking, would you rather be the um, – no, here's here's my point. Would you rather be the Brooklyn Nets? They're just perennially bad, so I'm Brooklyn, just going to go let's say, Brooklyn. Let's say Brooklyn. Let's say, <laughs> let's say you were the leading – would you rather be the leading scorer on Brooklyn or the seventh guy on the, on the Golden State bench? Right. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I get where you're coming from. Outside Looking In actually had made a comment on the Mahomes video mm. saying that, you know, Mahomes – you know, you have to have an elite level quarterback to be successful in the NFL. And there's a lot of evidence that supports that. Look at the elite level quarterback, what we consider elite level quarterbacks, and look at how often those teams go to the playoffs, right? It's very, very true. So, my counter to that in his comments, uh, and he said he was going to cut a video on it. So, I'm very curious about this. But my that. comment was, um, was about Seattle when Seattle went to the Super when, uh, when Russell Wilson's rookie season. They went 11 and five. Russell Wilson threw, you know, 26 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, 3,100 yards. We're not looking at anything phenomenal. It was a game manager. Yeah, right. And that's not an insult. Like always, people certainly say, not. It's not. Um... Certainly not. But I think there's so much to be said for just being effective. Right. That's it. I I don't care how you get to the playoffs. You just get to the playoffs. If it's 26 touchdowns, 3,100 yards, and 10 picks, and that's how you get to the playoffs, then that's how you got to the playoffs that year. Well, that's how they built it. That's why it right. got them to the playoffs. Right. Yeah, exactly. They, I mean, they really depended on the run game then and their defense. So they played clock management, right? But how is this team any different? So would you say that? But that, but that's my point. It's compared against Seattle. How is this team any different? You're building this team on defense because you don't really know what you got in offense. So do you really need a top flight quarterback? If all you're asking him to do is not win the game, but just or you're not asking him to win the game, you're asking him just to not lose it. I think you, you always need the best quarterback you can get, right? So, but if that's how you're building your team, it doesn't really make sense. I just need somebody to manage. This. Then you're Flacco. That, that's Alex Smith. Well, then you're then you're Baltimore. You're just perennially. I just need you not to lose this game. Right. You don't have then, to win it. Yeah. Then you're Baltimore. Mm. I don't want to be Baltimore. I don't want to be Baltimore. That's where they I, film The Wire. I am... <laughs> <laughs> that show's been gone for like 15 years. <laughs>